It's been more than 200 years since we Brits first set foot in a distant land known as Oz. But ever since, we've been coming here in droves. Ever wondered what it's like to live in the land down under? Welcome to Australia! Last year alone, a staggering 25,000 of us decided to permanently swap the daily grind of austerity Britain for the daily surf here in Oz. And who can blame them? A world-famous lifestyle, a booming economy and not much chance of any snow, it seems these Aussies have pretty much got it all. Well, apart from the ashes. <laughs> <laughs> I've travelled all over this country, scratching the surface to get to know the real Australia. And it's this insider knowledge that's helped me find new homes for some bold Brits making the move down under. This is the way to go house hunting. For the past three weeks, we've been in Melbourne, Adelaide and Canberra. And now we're heading to the central coast in New South Wales. I'm helping a couple who have turned their backs on conventional retirement in the UK. No bingo and bowls for them. They're embarking on the biggest adventure of their lives. Downsizing down under? Yeah, right. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> uh, that is perfect. Plus, I'll be meeting an intrepid expat who's got all the answers when it comes to making it big in Australia. You cannot be a whinging con. And I get a blast from the past. 20 years ago, I taught sport in an Australian school. I tackle another Brit who's doing the exact same job and loving it. This could have been me. Go! So stay right here for my definitive guide to upping sticks and moving to a land down under. Think you know Australia? You ain't seen nothing yet. I've been hooked on this fantastic country ever since I first came here as a 20-year-old backpacker. Ah, oh, the 80s, pastel colours, the new romantics, and, of course, big hair. But while times have changed, a little, my passion for Oz is stronger than ever. That's largely thanks to my wife. Fiona is an Aussie girl born and bred, and we love coming here with our two young boys to switch gears, relax, and enjoy the good life. Don't get me wrong, I'm very British and I'm very happy and settled living in Britain. However, um, Australia is a, it's a sort of fancy bit on the side for me. But it's not all perfect breaks and Barbies on the beach. Over the past 17 years, I've built up a comprehensive knowledge of the property market in the UK and I've made it my business to do the same over here. I'm just looking at your details. One, the one you've described as a little ripper. And now I'm putting that knowledge to very good use. I'm in New South Wales's central coast with a budget of £360,000 to try and reunite a long-lost family. Ian and Julie Lee are Brits whose grown-up children emigrated to Australia five years ago and are living just north of Sydney. As Ian and Julie have just retired, they feel it's the perfect time to up sticks and join the kids down under. Hello. There you are. At the moment, their main way of keeping in touch with daughter Susie and son Ben is over the internet. So are you, are you ready? You're looking forward to getting here? Well, it's not long. We would like to be actually on the way now because we're just really, really looking forward to it. The big incentive for this move is that in the last two years, they've gained two granddaughters, one of whom they haven't even met yet. It's been quite hard for us. It was nice to be able to see her and um, have her held in front of the computer screen, but it's not the same as actually being able to hold them in your arms. We want to be the sort of grandparents who are there, who they get to know and love and want to do things with them, not someone who flits in and out of their life. It was a no-brainer, you know, there was no way that we felt we couldn't go, you know, we just had to go. Julie's recently retired from teaching and Ian has sold the family ironmonger's business. They waited 18 months and paid a whopping £40,000 for what's known as a contributory parental visa. But finally, everything's in place and they're free to pursue their dreams and follow their family over to Australia. I'll be honest, it's the most exciting thing I've ever done in all my life. They're full of enthusiasm, but Ian and Julie are far from experienced in the housing market. 
They recently sold their family home in Oxfordshire for £400,000, the only house they've ever owned. We're incredibly nervous about buying a property. Buying another property anywhere, because we've only ever bought one property, but buying a property in Australia with a whole new set of rules, which we actually don't know, it's one thing we haven't actually investigated. They needn't worry, because that's where I come in. Although they may know nothing about house hunting in Australia, at least they know where they want to live. The central coast is an hour and a half north of Sydney and is roughly the size of West Sussex, but with the spirit of Cornwall. Since the children first moved to Sydney, Ian and Julie have been out to visit them five times, so they know the area well from family day trips. The central coast is where wealthy Sydney siders have their second homes, but international visitors pass over it and head straight for the city instead. More full then, I'd say. This place is considered unique for having stunning mountain ranges, beautiful river valleys and fabulous beaches all in such close proximity. And there's plenty of variety in the property market as well. The average house price here is $320,000 or £200,000. But Ian and Julie would prefer to live near the sought-after beaches in the south, where prices double because it's close to Sydney. Finally, it's touched down in Oz, and this time there's no going back. Ian and Julie's big adventure is officially underway, but I get the feeling house hunting is the last thing on their minds. For these two, family come first. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I felt very emotional as we were coming into land, just thinking this is now going to be our home with our children. It was quite a special moment. And early the next day comes the longed-for reunion with granddaughter Matilda. You had a kiss? Oh, lovely girl. And for their first ever meeting with baby Ruby. Hello, darling. Hello. To see Ruby today for, for the first, first time is absolutely wonderful. wonderful. I can't explain how I feel. It, it's, it's really emotional, to be quite honest. One family reunited. The only thing missing from this picture, of course, is Ian and Julie's new home down under. To find that, I need to tear them away from the grandchildren for a while and get these house-buying novices to focus on the job in hand. Well, let's get down to the nuts and bolts of, of things. Let's talk about the house um, and what you want from this house. I'm looking forward to the outdoor sort of lifestyle, so to be able to have a, a kitchen door that we can pull open, um, listen to the rainbow lorikeets, feel the warmth in the morning, sit out to eat breakfast. I like yeah. a, a good-sized kitchen with a nice open area in front of it, sort of family living area. You're also looking to, for quite a big house. It, there's no downsizing going on here, is there? No, we, we want the, the, the size that will allow all the children and grandchildren to come and see us at the same time, if necessary. You've been married for 40 years, but you've only actually made the decision of which house to buy once. That's right. H how do you make decisions? I make them quickly you, and, and sometimes I, regret them. I tend to think about it more. I think normally his decisions are the right decisions, even if they take quite a long time to come. <laughs> so we've got... Miss Impulsive and Captain Sensible. Possibly a good combination for house buying, but that lack of experience could become a problem. They're looking for a large family house with at least four bedrooms, spacious kitchen with access to a good-sized garden, and as near to the coast as we can get for their $580,000 or £360,000 budget. This search is going to be a balancing act between finding them their dream retirement home by the beach that's still large enough to have the whole family to stay, all in a popular and expensive area. Now, although I can arrange most things, the weather is not one of them. And over the past few months, Australia's reputation for surefire sunshine has taken quite a beating. I tell you, when it rains here, it properly chucks it down. But there'll be no raining on Ian and Julie's parade. They've asked for a large house which is close to the beach where the whole family can come and stay. So I'm going to show them just that. And at the same time, save them a fair wedge of their hard-earned retirement fund. To do that, I've brought them to the northern end of their preferred search area and the affordable suburb of Wungara. Up here, you get more bang for your buck, because although there are good beaches nearby, it's further from the city, so isn't as popular with the Sydney set. 
The house I want them to see is in a friendly neighbourhood with a mix of retirees and young families, and it's within easy reach of their children. It's about 50 minutes to Ben and an hour or 20 or thereabouts to Susie. Oh, that's quite a reasonable yeah, distance. That's, that's OK. Yeah, yes. I think that's about what we'd sort of reckoned yeah. on. Yes, it's the furthest end, I would have we, thought, we, of, mm, of where no. we wanted to be looking. Mm. Thumbs up for the location. Now for the house. There are four good-sized bedrooms, three bathrooms and two large living areas. But the best news of all is that it's on the market at $499,000, or £309,000, meaning it's £51,000 under their budget. They may be inexperienced house buyers, but it doesn't mean they need to spend more money than they have to. So the front formal-ish living room, very generous. Decent size. It was good. The best bit's through here, which is really very oh, open, yeah. lovely space. Lovely. Really nice. I, I felt that it was a really good, sensible house to start with. It, you'd have money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Yes, quite but, important at our age. Yes. And, and you'd be in, into a big house. Yes. How does coming in here, which is a very Australian contemporary property, how, how, is, how, how are you dealing with that? This would be absolutely my ideal, being a modern house. I actually don't want to go back to an old house. OK. I love it. Julie wasn't kidding when she said she made snap decisions. She's only seen a couple of rooms and already this place is ideal. Sensible Ian's keeping quiet. Now, the garden faces south. Uh, and for a new house, I don't think it's too bad. I like what they've done with the garden there. Yeah. I'm not talking about the hot tub. No, but it's... <laughs> I thought you'd be away with a hot tub. <laughs> no? Slightly overlooked as well. That would be my yes. only concern, that the people in that house and that one actually mm. could be. Yeah. Not, not that we're intending doing anything that shouldn't be overlooked. But... I really don't think it's a major point, but I'd be in there like a shot. This is the master bedroom. Oh, wow, that is a decent size. size. Walking wardrobe. Oh. Fairly <laughs> decent ensuite as well. The Australians have got this down pat because they're building so much with modern family life in mind. They understand, they know what works. I couldn't, couldn't ask yes. for a more perfect bedroom, actually. Yes, you don't need yeah. anything bigger than that. No. Certainly plenty no. big enough. Well, have a look at the others. Thank you. This is all going a bit too well. I'm kind of waiting for them to come back from seeing the bedrooms with this massive, great, we like it, but... It can't be this straightforward. Matilda's room. <laughs> Matilda and Ruby's <laughs> yes. room. Perfect. But again, yes. it would take a double bed, wouldn't it? It would, yes. Easily. But it would take a cot and a single bed. Mm. It's a good house at a good price. Yes, Julie is impulsive, but then it is possible that she really does love this place. If she doesn't, now's the time to say so. How'd you get on? Upstairs. It's Gives us good. actually everything we actually need. Certainly, very good. I, I've scarcely heard a negative thought. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit iffy about downstairs. I'm not sure that downstairs actually gives us what we want. I'm not sure whether the kitchen is actually quite big enough. I'm not sure what I would do with this front room, mm. whether I would make it into a dining room or whether I'd make it into a, an area that we might never use. I'm not sold on it. Fine. I'm starting to see what I'm up against with these two. They say one thing, but actually mean another. I'll be on the lookout for that from now on. Coming up, there's more conflicting signals from Julie. Oh, lovely. Ideal. Does it get you in the heart at all? Not really. And I get a glimpse of how life could have been if I'd stuck up my first job as a rugby teacher here in Oz. Beats being pushed around by Kirsty. Maybe I should have stayed. I'm in Australia, where thousands of Brits emigrate every year. Last year, 480 of them were of retirement age, like my house hunters, dynamic duo Ian and Julie Lee. If you're planning to retire to Australia, you'll still be able to receive your UK state pension, but make sure you get your timing right. The exchange rate will be fixed at the point when you start drawing it. Ian and Julie are searching for a home on the central coast in New South Wales to be near their family who live in Sydney. 
As house hunters go, they're pretty inexperienced and it shows. They're not sure what they want and they're not giving me much to go on either. Decent size. Oh, wow, that is a decent size. Because both their children already live here, Ian and Julie were able to come over on a contributory parental visa. When Susie first came out five years ago, she was sponsored by the British pharmaceutical company she was working for. And Ben's wife is Australian, so it was easy for him to make the move. But Australia is still crying out for skilled workers. So if you fall under this category and are under 45, then you have a good chance of getting a skilled migration visa. One group of professionals who are always in demand are teachers. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. You're looking at Mr. Spencer, ex-member of staff, the Southport School, Queensland. 20 years ago, I had a job for a year out here teaching sport and junior science. It was the best year of my life. I absolutely loved it. Well, that is exactly what this guy does. So I'm going to go and talk to him and uh, see how he finds it. He's also called Phil, so th this could have been me. Keep it moving, guys, as quick as you can. Phil. Start pushing down. I'm Phil. Hi, nice to meet you. Very Phil. nice to meet you. Likewise. Thank I had the best time. year of my life teaching this. I had the under-16 side up on the Gold Coast. Can I help? Of course you can. Philip Eads is a secondary school teacher from Yorkshire who moved over two years ago with his wife, who's also a teacher. They're keen. They are, they're very keen. He now works here at the private Central Coast Grammar School teaching sports and science. What was it that prompted the move? Was it simply it was easy to get work? Or? No, definitely not. Um, for, for several years, really, we'd looked at leaving the UK and coming out. My parents emigrated to New Zealand for a while, um, and I came out to, to Australia. Loved the lifestyle, loved the weather, um, and just thought, well, I fancy that. All right, guys, so this time what you've got to do... Another tasty incentive for Phil was the salary he was offered by his new school. For a main-scale teacher, I'm on a, around about £55,000. Whereas for a head of department in the UK, I was on about 30. That was head of department? Yeah, that was head of, head of chemistry. Blimey, that's a huge difference. Go! Admittedly, Phil has moved from a state school in the UK to a private one in Oz. Also, it pays to remember that the cost of living in Australia is higher than in England. Get over, get over! Certain things are much more expensive. White goods can be more expensive. Sure. Second-hand cars in particular. And how does the actual work compare with um, working in England? Here, the, the class numbers are smaller. So the largest class size I've got is 24, but I can go down to eight. You're enjoying your work more. Definitely. And you're being paid more for it. Correct. But you're not actually doing anything different. Mm, not really, no. And where do you, you and your wife go in the whole list? We've got the beach five minutes down the road, so we'll take the dogs down, do some kite surfing, all those kinds of things. There's no doubt it's a pretty attractive package. If you fancy uprooting and shipping your teaching skills abroad, first you need to get your degree and other qualifications recognised by Teaching Australia, which can take up to eight weeks. Then you need to apply for a skilled visa, which can take up to 18 months. But if you want to simplify the whole process and just fancy teaching abroad for a year like I did, then you can apply for a one-year working holiday visa. Bonus marks for anyone who knocks him on his backside. Get with him, get with him. Well, he's loving it. He's absolutely loving it. That's a very happy and satisfied teacher. Maybe I should have stayed. Last year, almost one British teacher left for Australia every single day. And joining them in the brain drain down under are university lecturers who earn around 34,000 quid in the UK but can expect to make 53,000 quid a year in Australia. And school administrators who can go from 43,000 pounds to 48,000 pounds. But it's not just teachers who are needed over here. Over 200 professions appear on the National Skilled Occupation List, ranging from locksmiths to neurosurgeons. For more information on emigrating to Australia and the jobs in demand, visit the Channel 4 Homes website, channel4.com slash homes. to Ian and Julie, and I've been having a tough time trying to read what my politely British house hunters are actually thinking. Their lack of property buying experience and Julie's impulsive nature meant she was making the right noises... I love it. ..about the wrong house. I'm not sold on it. Fine. The layout of that first house didn't work as a place the whole family could come and stay comfortably, so that's the first thing I'm going to address. Plus, we're switching location. 
by moving the whole search down south to their favourite part of the central coast. Terrigal Beach is the scene of many past happy family holidays and it's only 32 miles from the Sydney suburbs where their grandchildren live. We're closer to the city so prices have risen. Their budget won't get them a four-bed house right on the beach, but in the nearby town of Erina, I found them what I think is their best shot at a family home in the area. We're only 10 minutes from Terrigal Beach, and you're reasonably familiar with Erina, aren't you? Yes, we've uh, been around this area before. Um, Terrigal and Avoca we like very much, so yeah. close to them is good. We're scoring points. Let's see if the house gets a few more. <laughs> The big difference with this place is that it's all on one level. The four bedrooms and three bathrooms lead onto the spacious living area and garden. It's on the market and offers over $550,000, that's 340,000 British pounds. So still a comfortable 20,000 under budget. Righty ho. Oh, wow. Big living room to start with, master bedroom and it's en suite. Yep. And then we get to the dining room. Mm -hmm. I love the flow of this house. It just keeps on going. Study in there. Oh, lovely. Ideal. That is good. Lovely, yes. We've come up in price, but if this house was closer to the beach, it would be more than that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Position-wise, it does seem to be ideal. It, it is, yes. yes. I usually love hearing the word ideal, but after the last house, it doesn't quite ring true. They're walking around like polite guests rather than potential buyers. And at some point, they're going to have to step up a gear. You seem very relaxed about this whole move. Yeah, I think I am relatively relaxed about this type of thing. Um, this type of thing? Yeah. <laughs> Changing your entire life from top to bottom. Yes, I think I can adapt reasonably well. I do feel a real sense of duty with this search. Ian and Julia are so focused on being over here with their family, I think they just want to move into the first house that's acceptable. Yep. Nice. Surely we can do better than that. Well, they're saying all the right things, they're discussing all the right things, they seem open to compromise and they kind of understand that part of house hunting. There's a nice double bedroom here. What I'm not hearing is any real excitement. Polite enthusiasm doesn't get you the perfect house. What we need is some passion. So, how are we doing? Doing very okay. well. We mm. could envisage ourselves living here, we think. Yes. Does it get you in the heart at all? Um, not really. It, I'm sort of seeing it as, as practically, you know, it's got the rooms that we want. It, it has got a lovely view, and actually the view does grab me, but the house itself just ticks the boxes. Is that enough for you? I don't know. It's definitely not enough for me. That's two perfectly good family houses that have failed to set them alight. So I'm going to go out on a limb and show them something they haven't asked for. I know they love this part of the coast, so I'm heading even closer to the beach. A few miles down the road is the small, friendly suburb of North Avoca but the place I'm taking them to isn't your typical family house. I really want to get a strong reaction out of these two, and I think this is the place to do it. Ooh. One thing about North Avoca is it's very hilly, so you'll need to watch out for the exhaust. Well, here we are. Wow. And if we're quiet, you can actually hear the sea. I can. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. yeah. It feels like this is a bit of a tree house. It sounds mm -hmm. beautiful. Yes. I know it's family first for these two, but they're also looking forward to a long, active retirement in the great Australian outdoors. And in this place, nature beckons from every side. The house is built into a hill, so it's all on different levels and very open plan. It's got one less bedroom than my first two options, but it's been so cleverly designed that you get a real sense of space. This piece of paradise is on the market at $569,000. That's just short of £352,000. So right at the top end of their budget. A bit different here. Very different. Very different. For me, when I first came in here, I thought it was authentically Australian. This is... You, there's nowhere else in the world you could be. You stand here and you look out 
up the trees, you can hear the birds, you know where you are. It's gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. It's not as big as some of the other houses. Right. Mm -hmm. And its asking price is 569,000. I still like it. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Come and have a look out here, because the people who live here, this is where they have breakfast in the morning. <laughs> And the lower keats come down. We just heard a kookaburra. This, so is, this cool. is just how I imagine living in Australia. It's perfect. Really beautiful. I really like the different levels that there are here. It makes it much more interesting. Yeah. You asked me in the other house whether I've felt anything with my heart. Well, I do when I come in here. This excites me. Brilliant. So far, my plan's going well. This is the kind of passion I was looking for but I haven't heard anything from Sensible Ian yet. I do really like the house. There's this slight lack of storage that uh, worries me slightly. It's, it's a very valid point. A lot of people around here are putting a shed in the back garden. There was a small back garden. Right. Um, otherwise, get permission to convert the carport into a garage. That sounds good. That sounds good. Now for the tricky part. Ian and Julie originally wanted a house where their grandchildren could come and stay. Now, child-proofing this place is possible, but it's certainly not the ideal family home. I just wanted to show you something that, that is for you. I think you guys have done something incredible. Not only have you brought your family up in England and supported them, you, you've, you've followed them out here, and you've, but you will be a huge support out here as well. But you need... This is a new start for you. Yeah. And part of the move is definitely for us. We haven't been completely unselfish in coming to the other side of the world. This house is so original. I just love it. Now, that is genuine, starry-eyed enthusiasm. Like I hoped, this house has sparked something in Julie. It's given her the confidence to think about what it is they really want out of their new life here in Australia. I think if we were to live here with the children so young, I would be really scared of them wandering around on the terrace and falling down the steps. Whereas at home they're safe. And maybe it's a good thing. We could spend the time with them, go to their house, spend time with them on the beach, and then we could all go back to our respective homes and live our own lives. Because they yeah. don't want us to live on top of them mm. any more than we mm. want our whole life to be lived through them. Well, you go and see if you can um, see if you can twist his arm. <laughs> yeah, good idea. <laughs> That, that is what keeps me doing this job, because it's endlessly fascinating that people's criteria completely change once you show them something that they like. You haven't seen the master bedroom, no. have you? It's really nice. Still smiling. Still smiling, <laughs> Good, yes. good, that's what we want. <laughs> Happiness and Ian, Ian, smiling as well. You had to think about storage. Yes, I think it's uh, it's something we can work around. I'm sure it is. Um, we've got more to see. I don't really want to see another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take some beating. Know. It will take some beating. Coming up, I mix it up with a successful expat entrepreneur who gives me the inside track on how to make it big down under. You cannot be a whinging con. And the quiet man speaks. This really is what I imagine. Ian finds his super-sized dream home. It's much too big for us, but I don't care. I really love it. I just might be the luckiest man alive. Every year, I come south for the winter with my Aussie-born wife Fiona and our two boys to get our fix of that famous laid-back lifestyle. Nobody really cares what you do for a living. Everybody just asks you, are you happy? You see your mates, spending time with your family, did you watch the cricket? That's all that really matters over here. He's always keen to come, he's always loved it. And he knew Australia before he met me. Um, in fact, he's seen more of Australia than what I have. Good thing too, as I've been using that hard-won local knowledge to help my fellow Brits find the perfect property down under. This week, I'm with youthful retirees Ian and Julie Lee, who have said goodbye to the UK to follow their children and move to Australia. We're on the central coast in New South Wales, and so far we've been on quite a journey. They wanted a house where the whole family could come and stay, but 
my first two family properties left them cold. I'm not sold on it. Just ticks the boxes. But when I showed them something they didn't know they wanted, everything changed. This is a house for us. We haven't been completely unselfish in coming to the other side of the world. Ian and Julie are retired, but most people making the trip down under are looking to find specific jobs, and for this, they'll need to secure a working visa. The application process takes into consideration age, education and profession, what's called the points system. But there is another way in. If you're an entrepreneur with a strong track record, you can apply for a temporary business visa. Then you're free to set up any type of business you like. The Ashby family from Kent used exactly this method to obtain their golden ticket into the country. After securing their visas, they found a small Australian food manufacturing business. 49-year-old Nick was a successful businessman back in the UK, but four years ago he sold the business park he owned in Thurrock, up sticks with his wife Jill and their two girls, and headed down under to get a bit more spice in their life. Quite literally. I managed to buy a business in an area that I love, which is food. And we were very, very fortunate to find our spice business, which we've run now for almost four years. We buy individual spices and produce all the blends right from scratch. And then we go to markets and we actually sell them ourselves. With Nick and Jill's spice production business going from strength to strength, I want to find out exactly what it takes to become a successful entrepreneur down under. They've invited me round for a family barbecue at their beautiful home near Erinel on the central coast. It looks as though they've made quite a big success of things, judging by the house. Shame the weather isn't looking so good. Phil, I hope you don't mind, but you're in the kitchen with me. Is that all right? Uh, I'm here to help, <laughs> absolutely. Nick and Jill export their spice mixes around the world, and they're constantly looking for new flavour combinations. It's using the Thai spice here. But I want to know what motivated them to give up their life in the UK to come to Australia and risk it all on a new venture. So what, what prompted the move? Well, I think in life you always need, always need new challenges. Most people, when they, um, they're moving out to Australia, qualify on a points system for, for their visa, but you guys tackled it rather differently. Yeah. I mean, when you come in your 20s, it's easy. Um, you can come on a skills transfer, you can get a, a, a decent visa. <laughs> Sadly, as those years creep up on you... It gets a bit tougher. It does get a bit tougher. It's certainly true that getting his business visa was no picnic. As well as proving they had £250,000 worth of investment money, they also had to produce a 375-page dossier to establish their business credentials. Then what you have to do, within a certain period of time, which happens to be four years, you must get to Australia and successfully run a business within that four years for two years. You have to employ at least two full-time Australians or New Zealanders. The business now employs five full-time staff and turns over in excess of half a million dollars a year. They've also been able to achieve a lifestyle they could only dream of back in the UK. They run the business together, so coffee breaks are spent chatting on the beach, then it's only a 30-minute drive back down the coast to get home. The girls are also reaping the benefits of their new life in Oz. They get to spend much more time outdoors. After school, it's either into the pool or onto the championship tennis court. Pity today's weather isn't quite playing ball, but it sounds like the girls are out here enjoying it all come rain or shine. It really is like a sports camp. Floodlit tennis, cricket net, which I'd be very jealous of. And tell me, back home in England, did you play tennis or...? No. Yeah. We did a little bit of swimming, and that's pretty much okay. all the sport we did. Yeah. What kind of sports are you involved in now? I do netball, mm -hmm. uh, basketball. What about computer games? Are you into screens and TV or games? Um, much less in England. Well, that's music to any parent's ears. And the sound of dinner on the table is music to mine. So th these are the prawnies that you I was involved in. <laughs> And very tasty they are too. No wonder Nick's made a success of running a business down under. But what's the secret? You cannot be a whinging pom. If you're going to come here, you've got to really throw yourself into life. If you're good at something, you're accepted for what you are. You can be anybody and from any background, and providing you come across with enthusiasm and ambition, then you can get on. Around 20,000 Brits a year come to Australia on a business visa. 
If you want more information on buying a business in Australia and different types of entry visa, log on to the website at channel4.com slash forhomes. Back with Ian and Julie, a few miles further up the beautiful central coast, and although we've got a great house in the bag, this search is not over yet. This stunning house in North of Oka prompted a bit of a revelation from our devoted grandparents. It gave them a glimpse of a different kind of retirement, one where they had their own space and went out to spend time with the family. Because they don't want us to live on top of them any more than we want our whole life to be lived through them. They seem pretty set on the house, but I can't forget that when I first met them, they told me about their dream of being in a big family home surrounded by grandchildren. So to be sure they're making the right decision, I'm taking them back up to leafy Woongara. It's still only 50 minutes by car from where the children live, but because it's in an affordable area, I can max out the budget and show them the ultimate Aussie family palace. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> uh, that is perfect. I think I described that at the very beginning. You that did. I, wanted... I know you did. Yes, yes. I yes. wanted doors to open like doors that. doing that. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Now, I know Julie always gets excited when she first walks into a house, but this place is pretty dazzling. It's got four bedrooms and a potential fifth, three bathrooms, two outdoor covered areas, plus a garden big enough for a swimming pool. It's owned by a businessman from Sydney who uses it as a weekend place, and he's asking for offers between $550 and $595,000, so that's up to £368,000, just over their maximum budget. I got to thinking overnight that we had a very positive view at the end of yesterday. If you were going to spend that kind of money in the southern part of your search area, I just thought it was worth you seeing a, what a similar amount of money would buy you in the northern part of your search area. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's cavernous, it really is. <laughs> the biggest kitchen we found, huge pantry in there, Ian. You said yeah. yesterday when you walked in there, and this was what you imagined. This really is what I imagined. This is music to my ears. Ian's the sensible one and has been pretty quiet throughout this search, but something about this place has definitely got to him. Outside, the rain is still falling, but I don't think it'll dampen his enthusiasm. And again, the outside covered area is <laughs> huge. It's bigger than, it's bigger than a two-bedroom yeah. flat. Imagine the children could play over there on their tricycles and things like that. No yeah. expense has been spared out Look at his face. <laughs> it is absolutely... The bee's knees. The bee's knees, yes. <laughs> and the joy continues upstairs. His and hers wardrobe, ensuite. It's amazing. I haven't seen a house with so many f features that I actually love so much. It's a house on steroids. Everything's just kind of pumped up. Mm. Yeah. But it is only the two of you. But can you imagine a family Christmas or a family holiday mm. and everybody mm. could come here, we could have relations from England, they could all stay here. Imagine the parties we could have out on the decking. Mm. I think that says it all. In the end, true happiness for Ian and Julie is being surrounded by their family, and that's exactly what they can imagine happening in this place. It's much too big for us, but I don't care. <laughs> I love it too. Your emotional head saying... Emotional head, both of us mm. saying, have this. Hallelujah, we're finally there. My thoroughly British house hunters have found their Aussie bliss. How would you feel? if you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think I would be gutted if we didn't. Mm. OK, the pressure's definitely on now, because, as ever, it's not that straightforward. There's already an offer on the table, so Ian and Julie will need to act fast if they want it. And after all that we've been through, I don't want anything to get in their way. As Ian and Julie head back to Sydney to share their exciting news with their children, I'm going to give you a roundup of some of the best places to live on the central coast, whatever your budget. I'm talking beach houses. Here, you could pay as little as £200,000 for a doer upper, or you could splash out a small fortune on the likes of Castle Del Mar. 
While the name's a little over the top, it's hard not to be blown away by the uninterrupted views of the Pacific Ocean. Very tasty. And an impressive six bathrooms. Then again, you'll be doing more than spending a penny if you care to make an offer. It's on the market for six million dollars. But as is my way, I've saved the best till last. Welcome to Kilcare, a small town which boasts the Booty National Park right on its doorstep and what's regarded to be among the country's top ten beaches. This place is owned by one of Australia's richest men, and if money was no object for me, it offers the kind of lifestyle I'd want. A house by the sand that takes indoor-outdoor flow to a whole new level. This is the great Aussie dream, and here it's all yours for, well, price on application. Coming up, it was all going so well until their kids turned up. A little bit overlooked in the back. Yeah. It cost you a fortune to fill that up. Even when we were living at home, I think our house was probably smaller than this. So will their vision of family togetherness backfire? If we don't like it, we just won't come and see you. So. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the central coast in New South Wales, helping Ian and Julie Lee find their dream home where they can start their new life in Australia. After a soul-searching journey, they fell for a huge home in Mountain View, Woongarra. It's right at the top of their £360,000 budget, but this house isn't just for them. They want the whole family to enjoy it. So their children, Ben and Susie, have come up from Sydney to give it the once over. Nice to meet you. Hi, Ben. Thank okay, you both for coming along. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons that Mum and Dad wanted to come and, and have another look was the hope that this could be a sort of um, a meeting point for the whole family. It's certainly big enough. It certainly looks big enough. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? Um, I'm worried that these two aren't going to like it as much as we liked it yesterday, so I hope they do. If we don't like it, we just won't come and see you, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bit harsh, but the stakes are high. Ian and Julie are after their forever dream home, so naturally Ben and Susie are anxious. This is one decision they get absolutely right. There's no sign of mum and dad downsizing here. <laughs> in fact, Massive. late in life they'd be upsizing. It's a properly big house. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so the place has got the stamp of approval from Susie, but something tells me Ben's going to be harder to impress. The level of finish is very, very high. I'm not sure that necessarily they need a house this big, but um, it's, it is very nice. Whether it's the house for them or not, I'm not sure. Sounds like Ben's inherited his dad's sensible side. This house is very big for two people, but Ian and Julie have really fallen for it. The question is, will Ben fall into line? A little bit overlooked in the back. Yeah. It cost you a fortune to fill that up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Even when we were living at home, I think our house was probably smaller than this. Just buy it. So you can... <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd react like yeah, that. I love it. I hope this hasn't backfired. Because Susie obviously really likes it, and Ben's seems to be finding every reason that his dad shouldn't buy it. Whether that'll have an effect on how Ian feels about the house, I don't know. Obviously, I want everybody to be happy. How many times a year would you fill this house up? Not yeah. very often. The fact that it is too big means that you're paying more than you need to pay. It's, it's, all, it's all your decision. Yeah. But you're, you're trading off. You are definitely the trading location. off the location. Oh, yes. 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 And you know that. Ben obviously thinks that a better use of their money would be to buy a smaller place down south. But it strikes me that Ian and Julie really love this place and they can see their own future here. But do they love it enough to ignore any family objections? He seems you know, quite upset and almost in some ways of us thinking about it. I think you just have to brace yourself. I think once we've bought it, he would be happy. It's one of the most difficult decisions they've ever had to make, and I honestly don't know which way they're going to go. Ben wasn't so keen. He's, he's just worried for us that we're, we're making the wrong decision. And I, I'm grateful to him for his advice. And, and how are you guys feeling about it? Positive. We would actually like to, to make an offer. Great. 
Atta boy, Ian's sticking to his guns, but it's not over yet. I have actually just spoken with the agent, and because we know there is another offer, mm -hmm. but I'm told it's in the mid-range between 550, 550 and 595. With a serious offer already on the table, if Ian and Julie want to secure this place, they're going to have to convince the vendor they're committed to the purchase which means offering the price he wants and then slapping down a deposit straight away. In terms of a figure, I'd encourage you to put a figure that's going to buy it and try and blow the other side out of the water in one go. So if I was to ring him up now and say, 580's on the table, and we'll exchange contracts right away. Yeah, that, I'd be happy with that. Yes. Fine. Now I'm nervous. Uh, Jason, we've just had our um, con family conflab. I'm pleased to say they do want to make an offer and they understand and accept the, the terms that the vendor's looking for. The figure that they are happy to pay is 580,000. Thanks, Jason. Bye. All we can do now is wait. Thankfully, though, for the sake of everyone's nerves, not for long. Jason, hi, what news? Congratulations, we have a deal. Yeah. Hey, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. Chuffed to bits. Bye. Thank you very much. Well, Thank I you. never, never did. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Both of Thank you. you. Terrific. Great, great so house. So it's pleased. Pleased. <laughs> The start of your new life in Australia. It oh, is. Oh, <laughs> Superb. I'm delighted. Yes, yeah, so are we. Thank you so much. <laughs> Should I carry you across the threshold? I don't think so. <laughs> It'll be another few weeks before the deal is closed and they can actually move in, but Ian and Julie's tactic of offering an immediate exchange worked. They can relax. It's theirs. I can't believe it. It's ours. This is amazing. They, they've, we've done the deal outside the house. They've gone back in knowing that the deal is done and, and the house is theirs. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I was a little bit worried there for a moment or two, I have to confess. Uh, I'm not sure that Ben will be entirely happy, but I hope he'll come and visit. But it's not his money at the end of the day, it's theirs. And they are over the moon. So am I. Next week, I'm on the Gold Coast with a couple who may seem easy to please. Woo! Well... But their million-dollar budget just isn't big enough. Maybe just a bit too small. It needs to be probably twice the size. And I'll discover the secrets of success from some Brits. Apparently, it's down to chip fat. High stakes tonight on 4. What would your strategy be? Davina's back with the million-pound drop live at 10. Next, though, working out the willy-worries with embarrassing bodies.